Welcome back to the Dichotomy Diaries. If you've made it this far, you'll be happy to know that you've reached episode 19. We've got one more to go before we wrap up my part in this horrific journey. But before we dive back in, let's chit chat. You guys, marriage is hard. Love is hard. Fuck, all relationships are hard, you guys. But let me tell you something. None of those should ever be painful. They should never make you lose 20 pounds in two months. And they certainly should never make you wanna drive into oncoming traffic or jump off the highest, closest building. Let me be the person to tell you that the person who single-handedly destroyed your mental health is not your soulmate. I know that it is so hard to stay optimistic to love. And you should be weary about who to trust. But trust me when I say that one day you wake up and what hurt perpetually for the last however long just doesn't hurt anymore and that's the only way that I can put it for you talking to friends lately a lot of them have been asking me how in the world could I still be open to finding love and I usually just make some kind of joke like I should be a lesbian by now at this point but I think that that's actually proof that sexuality isn't a choice so I'm happy with that joke humans aren't supposed to be alone According to one of my all-time favorite dudes, Plato, in his symposium, he says, According to Greek mythology, humans were originally created with four arms, four legs, and a head with two faces. Fearing their power, Zeus split them into two separate parts, condemning them to spend their lives in search of their other halves. Please remember, you guys, that no matter how depressed, damaged, or unlovable you might feel sometimes, only you can stop the negative thought spiral. I made it through, and you will too. If you can't make it one day at a time, take it one hour at a time. And if you can't take it one hour at a time, do 10 minutes, one foot in front of the other. I believe in you, even though I couldn't even believe in myself. My name's Amanda Arnier, and this is The Dichotomy Diaries. Let's dive back in. Not that I want to, but for the purpose of this story, let's remember where we left off last week. I was laying in bed. It had just turned June 21st, 2023 my one-year wedding anniversary. And my phone starts going off. Notification after notification after notification. And of course, because I've been threatened, right? If you don't pay me my money, if you don't do this, if you don't do that, the dreaded lizard bitch was going to post videos of me crying, and ugly pictures of me and our conversation for all of our family and friends to see. So of course, my stomach drops, and I'm like, wow, she really did it. This bitch is fucking mad. So I pick up my phone, and I look, and I have a message from my uncle. Oh my god, Are you okay? Amanda, call me. I have a message from not one, but two of my old bosses. Is everything okay, Amanda? I'm worried. Give me a call. Send me a message. Anything. I even got messages from old professors from both undergrad and law school. Worried. Because... 
they had just been added by an Instagram page that was in my name with videos of me crying about my husband cheating on me. I didn't post it. She did. There were so many messages coming in, one after another, that I had to turn my phone off. I had been mentally preparing for this to happen, but nothing prepares you for when it actually does. I was losing my shit. I take that back. I did not turn my phone off right away. The first thing I did, naturally, was pick up the phone and call my husband. Because in this moment, you guys, we are acting as a team. We're both under attack from this person, you know? So I ring him. Of course, he doesn't answer. I take a screenshot of the page and of some of the messages I'm getting from our family and friends, and I send it to him. And then I say, I need to be away from my phone for a bit. While I'm away from my phone, let's just call it an hour, hour and a half. I come back and there's 125 different notifications for messages. There's one from a number that I don't recognize. So I open the thread and what is in the message, you might ask, Amanda? Let me tell you, it was a 13 minute long video of Lizard Bitch sitting in her living room on her couch wearing a costume wig. And I, I don't even fucking know what kind of clothes she was wearing because she looked like a clown. Basically threatening me, telling me that she was going to expose everything bad that I did and all of the horrible things that Dick did. And she was thanking me for giving her the idea, all of this stuff. It it literally looks like a ransom video, you guys. And again, 13 minutes long of her face talking. I don't know what kind of crazy bullshit this woman has going on in her head, but to think that you should make a video of your own face threatening two people and then send it to those two people. She is out of her goddamn mind, you guys. I I swear to God. So this is going on. And I think maybe I had asked my family to like console me a little bit. And they were like, well, you know, you're getting back together with Dick. So this stuff is going to happen because you're allowing it. They were really like the boy who cried wolf to me. And I felt that. And it was embarrassing, but I didn't know how to like manage what was going on other than just ignore it. So that's what I did. Ironically and super unfortunately, this same day, June 21st, 2023, my brother had gone into the emergency room for a very serious health issue. We had found out that he had a very bad diagnosis. My whole family was mortified and I'm at a complete loss for words because now everything that's going on in my life seems so unimportant and minuscule. And while it isn't to me, comparatively and in the grand scheme of things, 100% chump change, you guys. So I'm in my feels about my brother's health, about being exposed and made fun of and blasted on the internet for no fucking reason. And all I want to do is is obviously talk to my husband. And he really just ignores me for essentially like the whole day. When I finally do hear from him, he doesn't even really acknowledge like anything that I said about my brother. He is not really acknowledging the fact that there's this fake Instagram profile blasting our friends and family like horrible shit. He just tells me that he's going to go to LA for the Dodgers game on his birthday, which was coming up in two days. It's going to be his 30th birthday. He made a huge deal about it for basically the last six months and now here it is. 
I told him that I was upset because earlier in the week, without telling him, I booked a flight to Vegas. I wanted to surprise him and let him know that I was going to be there and, you know, stand in solidarity with him on his 30th birthday. He legit yelled at me. He tells me to cancel the flight, tells me I'm stupid for spending money that we don't have. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? So I'm like, okay, but like, if you're not going to be in Vegas, can I come to LA? Can I just switch my flight to like fly to LA and we can go to the Dodgers game together? And he goes, no, I want to be alone. I'm going with Matt. And I'm like, oh, okay. Once again, Matt gets to be your partner and your wife. Okay, cool. Still, it's our anniversary and he has not acknowledged. He has not said happy anniversary. He's not said anything. And you damn well know that I am not saying it, not because I forgot, of course not, not because I'm even mad. I'm literally just testing him. I really just want to see, like, is he really going to go the whole day and not say anything? At 12.40 a.m. on June 22nd, he texts me and says, good night. I love you. Happy anniversary. So let's fast forward to uh, the 23rd which is his big 3-0 30th birthday. Earlier in the week, one of my girlfriends had given me a call and said, hey, Amanda, like, what are you doing on the 23rd? And I was like, oh, I don't think anything, honestly. And she was like, well, I have some Morgan Wallen tickets uh, for his concert at Wrigley. And I have two, like, do you want to go with so-and-so, our other friend? Um, we couldn't sell them and we'd much rather like sell them to you guys and you guys could go and enjoy yourself, you and this specific friend. We're kind of going through like the same kind of thing. So she's like, you guys go. And I'm like, okay. Now, mind you, in this time, for the past, I don't know how many months, I've been like isolating and I don't think that it was intentional. I think that I was dealing with a lot of emotions and I didn't really want to be around people because I was super nervous that I would be like out having a grand old time, which I also thought was unlikely, but that it would just like bust out into tears. And I'm like, I don't want to embarrass myself. Like, I don't want to see, you know, a married couple. I don't want anybody to ask me where he is. Like, there was a lot of me just kind of putting bumpers around myself, which caused myself to isolate. Well, when you isolate, you're not socializing. So, we get to the concert, okay? And I had driven down there. <laughs> the stadium was so fucking packed, you guys. I like had a mini panic attack like walking in. I have never seen more people at Wrigley. And I think that that's actually valid because all of the stands were full and the whole entire field was like standing room. And I'm like, this is wild. And so if I could only explain how I felt, I felt like unsafe. Every opportunity or instance where I was in a crowd this big over the course of the past two years, I always had Dick to like kind of like hold my hand and he'd lead and he'd like lead me through the people. And I knew that like no matter what happened, like he was going to protect me, whether it was physically or like emotionally being like in a social situation that big. He always was like, it's okay, calm down. Like if you want to leave, like we can leave. He was always really good about that because I, I do have a little bit of social anxiety. But like now I'm with my girlfriend. She's the same height as me. I'm hella uncomfortable. But I also looked hella cute I I can probably imagine that like the whole entire night I had this look on my face that was kind of like damn I look cute but don't fucking talk to me because that's how I felt I also weirdly remember not being able to like remember lyrics to songs that I've sang 10,000 times and I thought that that was so strange. But now thinking about it, I'm like, all of the trauma that I had gone through, there are so many things and instances over the course of the past two and a half years where I'm like, God, my brain was just half asleep. It was broken. 
all because of everything that Dick put me through. So I think at some point, maybe it was like an intermission or maybe I went to the bathroom. I was like scrolling on Instagram, maybe waiting in line. And I didn't realize that I was on one of like my fake Instagram accounts. So I'm like scrolling and all of a sudden, you know who pops up in my feed? You're not going to guess. Blonde bimbo $300 anal bitch. And guess what she's wearing? She's wearing an LA Dodgers jersey, you guys. Now, like, isn't that like the most ironic? thing that you've ever heard considering that my husband went to LA with Matt to go to a Dodgers game so I send him a text and I go hey how's the game oh it's so good I just got myself a custom jersey okay well you get a custom jersey at the store that's all the way at the top of the stadium right I know because he took me to get one of my own all right guess where her pictures are at in the very tip top team store where you get those custom jerseys I I I I keep saying I lost my shit I didn't lose my shit I didn't I didn't fucking say anything to him I didn't inside I was fucking dying and my stomach hurt I wanted to throw up I wanted to leave but I couldn't we're halfway through the concert So I go back to the seat. I tried to explain to my friend what I just saw, but this whole story is so convoluted that when you tell somebody like one part, honestly, they're like, yeah, that sucks. That's crazy. Oh my God. What an asshole. He's a dick. Like, but they don't really know like the complexity of like, how crazy is it that I was scrolling and I saw that on that Instagram? Like I wasn't looking for it. It was just there. So there's no pictures of them together. And I can't see anything on his Instagram, but they're definitely at the same game. And it would be too much of a coincidence to say that they weren't there together. So now the concert's done and I decide that I'm going to drive home. I actually like maybe only had one beer. Like again, I was not drinking because I didn't want to be sad. I'm already sad enough all the time as it is. So I'm driving home and I confront him about it. And I think that I did this via text because anytime I would try to call him, he literally would not answer, even on his birthday. I'm like, so I confront him about it and I go, I I literally send him the screenshot of this girl and I go, really? You're spending your birthday with the $300 anal girl? Like, what the fuck? And he says back, I don't want to talk about it. Fuck that crazy bitch. I'm like, wait a minute. Did you just basically admit that you were there with her, but now you're like, I don't want to fuck with her anymore? Because like, I think that that's what you did. So I get home, I get up into bed and I open my phone and there's this long ass text message from Dick. And the text says that he wants to get a divorce and move on in peace, um, even though it's going to be sad. I'm reading this verbatim. It's not about love. Love is irrelevant because it's not even close to strong enough to get through all the bullshit. So I respond back because I'm, I'm cooked. I'm done. Like, yeah, take me off the grill, coach. Like, I don't know. I said, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'll be removing myself now. And he said... There is no way I would stay away from you for two months, including our anniversary and my 30th birthday otherwise. And the fact that you would not want to be together for my birthday and anniversary and say you love me like God does is dumb as shit. Oh my God. If there was ever a definition for gaslighting, this would be it. He says, I'll get the papers sent immediately. I said, good luck. Kind of like Liam Neeson and Taken. So I was in the mental place of, I need to move the fuck on. I cannot believe that he said, you didn't want to be together for our anniversary and my birthday because that's the only thing I had wanted. That's the only thing I had wanted. I legitimately was going to put aside the fact that he fucking cheated on me if he would spend our anniversary and his birthday together, you guys, and he's like, you didn't want to be with me. 
That's why I'm not coming back. So I'm like, fuck this, dude. I'm like, I have to start healing. I have to start not thinking about the possibility of being together with him. So I decided to plan a week trip to Atlanta to go and unplug and stay with my uncles and just kind of like lay out, float, tan, no drama, maybe go to a nice dinner, but overall just like be around support and be in a different place and unplug. For the next two days, I really didn't hear from him that much. I had thought about blocking him, but you know, this is how this is how we do things when we're abused by narcissists and sociopaths is like if you block them then you'll miss the message and that doesn't seem like an option basically ever because what if they're sending a message saying I love you I'm coming home I'm so sorry it's like the stupidest mentality but it's where your brain goes at this point and I know that there's so many people listening that are like you're fucking dumb for like the 57,000th time Amanda But then there's also a lot of people that can say truly that they've 100% been there. That blocking their person, no matter what they've done wrong, just never seems like an option. So it wasn't. So let's see. Maybe he texts me once or twice and it was about like stupid shit. He'd be like, I'm getting the papers. I'll send you the 7,000 that I owe you. And I'm just being like flat back to him. I'm like, leave me alone. I'm going to Atlanta. I'm going to spend a week with my uncles and I'm going to start to move on. This is what you wanted. On June 25th, you guys, he starts answering the paired app questions again. He answers a question on June 25th. The question is, what would you like to improve in your relationship? His answers financial goals, regulating emotions in arguments, and time together. Underneath those answers, which it was kind of like checkboxes, right? He wrote a note and it said, I want us to work towards being back together for good when you come back from Atlanta. I so wish I could tell you guys that I didn't fall for it. That right there, I blocked him and I never looked back. But... That's not what happened. I fell for it all again. And I texted him. And I texted him and I asked him, when did you answer this question? Because I was like, I was wondering if he had answered it before and I hadn't seen it or, you know, just something like that. Because it seemed so polar fucking opposite from I'm getting divorce papers. I'll pay you back the money that I owe you. I'll send them. They'll be at your door. It's so very much the opposite. So I texted him and he said, yesterday in the afternoon, I think, and I'm reading this verbatim. This is an exchange between him and I on June 25th. I want to put all of this to rest and rejoin each other's side once and for all whenever you return from Atlanta. So I said, I would like to understand what has brought you to this decision without a filter. He replied, it's inappropriate and unproductive to be apart and only perpetuates the issues. I said, I agree with that. He replied, it's not really addressing or progressing on key things that will not be resolved by space and time. The space and time has been massively helpful to me, although painful at times too. Here's me thinking, oh, it's painful. Oh, okay. Were you in a lot of pain? So much pain. Oh, poor dick. (laughs) I reply, that is also correct. It has been mostly painful for me, as you can imagine. However, the space and time have given me clarity in a lot of areas. I'm glad it has been helpful to you. He replies, while I think there's a lot of things that you wouldn't have the opportunity to see in the same way otherwise, but ultimately, we are already joined together. Being separated longer is inappropriate. Inappropriate? That's what's inappropriate. In this whole fucking story, that is what's inappropriate. Mm, This guy, I swear, this fucking guy. 
I reply, it's imperative that you understand the importance of being able to empathize and sympathize with me in regards to the devastating actions you have taken not only these past five weeks, but our entire relationship. There are many things that I need to correct also, don't get me wrong, but we are going to need to work with a counselor alone and together intensively to be able to overcome this. He replies, I do understand that. It's going to take a lot of work, but I doubt that it's something where it's not worth it or where we would do the work and feel like it's not worth it. And I reply, I'm just going to be flat out honest with you because it's the only way I'll be moving forward. Your actions created a space that I felt so unsafe in. I was afraid to leave the house in fear I would return and you would be gone. I physically felt pain each time you would leave to even go to the gym because of how afraid I was to lose you yet again. My body has been in a constant state of fear for over a year, resulting in poor overall health, depression, and lack of quite frankly wanting to be alive. And you made me feel all of those results of your actions were unfair to you, like my pain was such an imposition. The moments of joy I experienced with you during this time was literally all that was keeping me alive. I had thoughts, truly, that I just wanted to get into a car accident or have something horrible happen to me so that you would get a call and remember how you feel for me. I cannot ever be in that place again. He replies, I'm glad that nothing bad happened to you. I think we can successfully create a life that you do feel safe. All of the feelings of sadness and the things that come along with that need to be replaced by conscious thought and action. I know it can be done. I take full responsibility for my actions and my part in fueling these thoughts and feelings of danger and depression. I replied, thank you for saying that. I said, that being said, I have faith. While I'm upset with God currently, I still believe. And I have always known that you and I together, aligned, respecting, and loving each other with unconditional reciprocal love, is the most powerful thing that can accomplish anything. <laughs> Sorry. He replied, I went to church today with Matt. First time he's ever come with me. It was good. I talked to the bishop and he saw my text about counseling from six weeks ago and asked if I still needed help with those things, and I said yes. I then responded again to his comment about being trepidatious from the beginning and whatnot. I said, I have never doubted or second-guessed that you were my person. I know that you have, and I feel for you on every level, because it came so effortlessly for me to say, yes, I want to spend my entire life with this person and love him no matter what. I feel for you because loving you means wanting you to feel that sureness, I also know it's been extremely hard for you to trust anyone for many reasons. I've always wanted to be your saving grace in that regard, so you never have to go to sleep or wake up and feel like you're alone. Love means putting you before myself in many ways, even though, of course, God and myself are on top priorities. Love can only truly exist when you think of the other person and empathize with their feelings in order to shape your actions. That's how I truly feel. Oh, I also went to church today too. I had a weird feeling that you were there as well. And that's actually not a lie. I actually did go to church that day, which was crazy because I had not gone to church, right? Because Mormon church, I'm in Illinois. Like I, I had not gone to church in a minute and I did go to church that day and I did feel like he was at church. I don't know what it was, but maybe I wishful thinking and I was just like, oh, it would be so nice if he went to church because then maybe he would like start to see and understand. I know, the Lulu, but that wasn't me just like blowing smoke. It actually did happen. I did go. So he then like sent me a picture from, it was like a table and it had like a table card and it said happy birthday on it. And he's like, I'm having an amazing lunch or brunch or something to celebrate my birthday again. And he sent me a selfie and he looked like, he looked sad. And so I responded, you look nice, but your eyes look sad. It's a great color shirt on you and your hair is shiny and full had to put that in there no like gas him up just a little bit not that he deserved it or anything I then said also in regards to Matt he disrespected me 
he disrespected our marriage. Whether it was your ask of him or him choosing to do so, I do not want anyone in my life that not only doesn't speak up when they see their best friend imploding their own life, but participates in and supports it. If you choose to maintain a relationship with him, I am going to need an apology and boundaries need to be laid out before him by you, the leader of our team, and not crossed. I felt like I was holding my own here. I felt like I was setting up boundaries that were very stern and very direct. I don't feel like I was being emotional. I was communicating my emotions and my feelings, but in like a factual, like stern, non-emotional way. That's how I looked at the way that I was speaking to him. He went on to, I don't know, like talk about his dinner or something like that. And I said, you never responded to my message about Matt. What are your thoughts on that? And I guess anyone else who shared a similar stance in your life. And he said, it's not negotiable. It's fine for me. I said, what's not negotiable? He said that it's one or the other, clearly. And I said, well, I don't feel comfortable with making you pick. I feel that it's more important that you express you or our boundaries, unless you don't feel that he is capable of not crossing those and or taking it seriously. If that's the case, it's a moot point and decision is already made. He replied, if you know Matt, you know. I reply, I wish that wasn't the case for you, but yes, I know. I said, anyways, what are you up to? And he says, going to get dinner now. I got a mani-pedi. I replied, with lucky and a four-leaf clover. And then I sent him a picture of my nails, which at this point in time were like the most trailer nails I can possibly fucking explain to you guys, like so grown out, like six to 10 weeks. He goes, oh boy them's a month late to get replaced. I said, I wish I could just take them off. I got them before you came back before EDC. Same with my extensions. Need a move up hardcore. He says, I can definitely make $150 to send to you to get a Manny and Petty done right. I said, thank you. He said, like by tomorrow. I said, I would really appreciate that from you. Weirdly enough, he started sending me questions about what I needed out of a relationship. And it was, it was definitely like a meme that he had saw that he sent to me. But you know, we were kind of going back and forth on that. And I followed up with some questions that I have had in my notes for God knows how long, um, kind of like my check in questions. So the questions were, did I recently do anything that made you feel loved? Do I make you feel good in front of other people? What are things about our life that make you happy? What is your way of showing me your love that perhaps I do not realize? So his first answer was, I think we have a very easy time enjoying exchanges with each other and just being around each other, which makes me happy. He went on to say, I don't need to entertain you and you don't ever embarrass me, which is nice. I replied, I'm glad. I don't feel like I need to be entertained and I feel like I always conduct myself in a classy way, especially around others, whether it's in our home or out of the house. He said, I think that's true. Thank God. So that text exchange was basically the day before I was leaving to go to Atlanta and I felt almost hijacked again, I guess, because all I really wanted to do for like once in the last like I don't know how long was really um unplug not be addicted to checking his socials another bitch's socials like I totally saw the addiction and what was going on in my brain and it was super super unhealthy and the fact that I was seeing it and recognizing it and then I actually did something to try and like okay we need to get out of this because this is not good Um, that's what Atlanta was for me. And, um, now I'm getting out of this text conversation, which seems like almost one of the most adult conversations I've ever had with my husband. And there's no way that I can unplug now because he's telling me that he's going to come back. And 
So I kind of like laid it out for him like this is why I'm going to Atlanta. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and take as much time not being on my phone as possible. I deserve this. Please respect that. And he was like, okay, I love that for you. Tell them I said hi. And I'm like, yeah, fucking right. Like the fuck do you mean tell them you said hi? Um, when I was in Atlanta, um, I got there and my uncles had sent uh, someone to pick me up and I get to the house and I had never been to their house before and it's so beautiful um, and very bright and airy like talk about two men knowing how to properly decorate a house just to like incite all of the positive feels like the moment you walk in the door you're like huh um and so it was awesome it was awesome to see them I hadn't seen them in a long time and I certainly hadn't spent a lot of time with them so you know basically you know my uncle was like hey your uncle talking about his husband he's gonna be working the whole week we're here this is my routine I am going to continue to do my routine you do your routine and so basically like giving me the autonomy to like make my day what I wanted it to be not have any major plans but he did say hey I plan dinner on this day I plan dinner on this day we'll figure everything else out and that felt so good because it felt like I had this freedom to be like I'm gonna wake up whenever the fuck I want I'm gonna lay outside for 19 hours you know just kind of like I can do what I please and in the evening we watch tv or a movie at this time like you can join us if you want otherwise like totally fine so my routine really was I wanted to kind of sleep in a little bit but I had been sleeping for weeks so I was kind of energized and it was warm warm in Atlanta so I woke up probably like nine between eight and ten every day I was there I had downloaded a journal app and I would wake up I'd grab a book and my iPad to journal and I would go sit outside with some tea and I would journal. I would do a little bit of like floor core work on a mat outside by the pool and then I would go back inside maybe have some breakfast go back outside and basically just cook myself in the pool and you know I had a little bit of music playing and that was good um you know around let's say like between three and five um, they would come outside and get in the pool and then we'd just kind of like chill and talk and it was really really nice like it was I just love my uncle so much because I feel like they've always been extensions of fatherly figures to me and whenever I've had any type of issue in my life whether that's something that I could talk to my parents about or something that I just didn't feel comfortable talking to my parents about I always knew that I could go to them and so we have that kind of relationship where it's kind of like you know um I don't know like father daughter and and I just I love that I'm so thankful for them they have both of them have done so much for me um no oh, it makes me a little bit weepy because now thinking back it's like every single time is something like catastrophic happened to me um I would go and spend time with them and they always made me feel better Whew. damn sorry guys um anyways so I was doing a lot of like zenning out and we went to some really nice dinners and they drove me around their neighborhood which was so freaking beautiful um definitely not what you think about when you think of Atlanta that's for sure um but you know throughout the week uh Dick is is texting me and again I can't disconnect um but he does tell me and shows me that he booked a trip to come see me and the dogs in Chicago because he misses us dearly is what he says so I come home from Atlanta and I'm getting like a lot of nice texts from him. I hope you had a good trip. Like it looked like you had an amazing time. I hope you feel refreshed. I'm very excited to see you. I love you. All of that. And I said, hey, can you resend me your flight confirmation? So this time he actually sent me like the receipt and it showed like that the flight was like $600. And I was like, damn, like what? why is it so expensive? He's like, it's all right. And like, I'll pay any amount to come and see you. 
And he's like, that's how bad I just need to see you and our, and our babies. Um, you know, there's a few, uh, text exchange, you know, where he was like, oh, wow, I was just thinking about you, baby. I miss you. I can't wait to wrap my arms around you and never let go. Um, before he was set to, to come to Chicago, I believe that he had a tennis tournament, um, in Las Vegas. And I know we've talked about his, uh, one past tennis tournament where he like freaked the fuck out and broke his racket and like stomped off. But, he actually didn't win this one, but I don't think he like did in place. He got some sort of award, like a, like a plate and he took a picture of himself and he posted it on his social media on Instagram. Well, we're following each other again on Instagram. And I commented like, good job. I'm so proud of you, babe. That's it. He fucking hid the comment guys. And I was like, please, please tell me this is a malfunction of the app like that that this cannot be what's going on I think we argued about it and I was like stop being fucking dumb I know that you did this and I don't think he ever like reshowed it honestly the 4th of July is rolling around and I actually spent that with Marissa and her family which was actually really nice we just watched um fireworks here in Huntley but I did feel like super alone. Um, we had gone over to, I think it was her cousin or her aunt's house and like, you know, husband, wife, beautiful babies running around, sparklers, like, I don't know, just like the whole American like dream thing that I just thought at this point, like I would have. And when I would talk to people that were at this gathering, you know, like finding out that people were like two years older than me or my age and they've got like three little beautiful babies running around and this wonderful house and three cars in the driveway. It made me feel so insecure and sad and I don't know, it was just, it was a bittersweet holiday because I hadn't spent it alone in, in two years at least. So that, that was interesting, but I was super glad that I could be with Marissa and and I know that she was feeling um some type of way too and so we were there to like support each other which this summer has really like consisted of a lot for us um there are blessings in misfortunes I I see that so much now um so on July 7th Dick flew into Chicago um to see me and I picked him up and we immediately went downtown. Um, the plan was that we were going to go downtown and we were going to stay there. And then we would figure out how we were going to get the dogs and where we were going to stay after that. So we ended up staying in River North and he paid for the hotel. Um, it was it was awkward being in a hotel room with him for the first time after like two months. It was. Like, I don't know. I... We definitely slept together, which I felt weird about too. And you want to know something, you guys? Like, so this is my husband, okay? And I know his mannerisms. I know the way he kisses. I know what he does with his hands, you know, during sex. I, I know all of that stuff. I'm not kidding when I tell you that he, like, over the course of 60 days, like, had learned, like, a new, like, grab by the back of the neck face kiss thing he was never like a face holder when he kissed and now he is and that was devastating for me to experience while I was in such a vulnerable position that I felt uncomfortable about already um yeah, I that was one of the things I I totally did not remember that until just now. Um, the next day we went to a White Sox game because we wanted to do a sporting event. It really was like the only one going on. Um, he tells me that like he won a lot of money and he is walking around this huge wad of cash in his pocket and he's got more in his account. So he's kind of paying for everything. And the next day, Oh, actually, so we actually checked out and then we went to the Sox game. And then after the Sox game, I think we ended up leaving early. Um, He's like, I want to go see the babies. And I'm like, okay. So we drove to go get the dogs. And 
I picked them up from my mom's house and luckily my mother wasn't home. Um, so I went to go get them and we had to find an Airbnb that would allow dogs. And so my thought was he, Dick really loves Lake Geneva. I'm like, why don't we go and look if there's anything up there or at least like something lake front front property, you know? Um, so we ended up finding an Airbnb in the chain of lakes and it was one that I was like, how about this one? So we get there and it's like so cheap and so shitty. And he's basically just like crossed armed looking at me like, really, really? I bought us a hotel. This is where you're having us like this white trash shithole. But the dogs were with us like, and as much as he said he missed them so much, who was taking them out every five seconds? Who was feeding them? Who was not complaining about the fact that they were whining? You know, like it it was just all a facade. So he is in Illinois, right? So what can he do in Illinois? Sports bet. And I think Wimbledon was on. I might be wrong. Don't quote me. But I think Wimbledon was on. And he's placing a lot of bets. And he's losing money constantly. He hates the Airbnb. He tells me that he didn't want to spend his quote unquote vacation this way, that he's losing money. And he starts on this whole, whenever I'm with you, I lose money fucking rant. And so I'm like, oh my God, we need to get out of here. So I'm like, Hey, I have like a date day plan for us. And we leave the dogs back at the Airbnb and I drive to Lake Geneva beach. And I pay for us to go lay in the sand at the beach. And while we're laying in the sand at the beach, he loses thousands of dollars. I don't know if, I'm pretty sure it had to have been bet online because you can't bet in Wisconsin, but thousands of dollars, probably the last of his money. Um, And then I took him to dinner after that. We got back, we walked the dogs. And then I'm like, you know what, we should just get the fuck out of here because we were thinking about extending it. And I was like, this is just, it's just not good. So... I think we actually, no, you know what? I think we actually slept over one more night. We were gonna leave, but then we're like, no, just fuck it. We'll just stay over. We're not going to try and find another one, play another cleaning fee, whatever. So we stay overnight and he has a flight. Let's say it's at like 6 p.m. It's super early and I have to bring him to the airport, but we have all this time. And so on my way from the Airbnb to the airport, we would pass through like my dad's town and so I called my dad and was like hey can you watch the dogs for a couple of hours I'm with Dick however his flight doesn't lead till this time we're just gonna go do some stuff in Rosemont and he's like sure and I go I, I'm like I'm gonna text you and so then I texted him as soon as we hung up and I was like Dick is gonna be with me please do not yell at him please do not start a scene So we pull in the driveway and I could tell that Dick was actually kind of nervous. And initially I got out of the car, I let the dogs out and he's still sitting in the car. And I'm like, is this motherfucker really not going to get out? But he does, barely. And he walks over to my father and he shakes his hand and we carry on to Rosemont for lunch. While we're at lunch, we start talking about like some pretty serious shit and serious in a way not like emotional or like relationship stuff, but serious goals, serious planning. And we're talking about a few of these houses that we've been kind of like sending back and forth over the course of the past week. And, you know, we're talking about, well, if we moved to Tennessee, which was always a place that we agreed on, um, we could probably afford a mortgage on a place that was X amount of money, right? And there was quite a few within our budget. And so I had found a guy who dealt with like tough credit situations, first time home buyers, and he had sent me a pre application, like a pre approval application. So at this lunch, we fill out a mortgage application. We put in all of the information. I had gotten like 1099s and W 2, and like I, I got all of the things that I needed prior to having this conversation with him because. I wanted to be together and to do this because it felt like this will get us into the next chapter. So then we still had like, I don't even know how much time, probably an hour to two hours left. And we're like in the square in Rosemont and y'all know if you're from here, like what's right fucking next door, the Rivers Casino. And I'm like, 
why don't we go over there? You know, it actually was my idea. I'm like, we have fun when we gamble together. You know, like he, I think he had like a couple hundred bucks left. And so we go over to the rivers and he proceeds to lose whatever cash he had left. And he was making a fuss like about being broke and spending so much money on this quote unquote vacation, staying in a shithole that I picked. And so I think I like, I didn't have that much money in my account. I probably had in total like $700. And I think I took out like 400, gave him two, I took two. So we're playing the same slot right next to each other. Money falls. It's my favorite one. And he loses it all and I win. And I think that I probably made like $700 or $800 um, while we're sitting at the slots, okay? I get a notification that Dick had posted a new reel. Now, remember when I told you that he had left because he hired this whole media company for $7,000, asked me to help him pay for it? That was the reason or his excuse for why he left the first time when we had just moved in with my dad. Okay, so this media company, they would record a bunch of content, chop it up, and make reels. Again, they were about nothing. But I look at this one, and the title of it, or the caption, says something about, like, online dating nightmares. And so I, like, get up, and I'm going to go to the bathroom, and I'm watching this, and he full out, okay, is talking about lizard bitch stalking him publicly telling the world that he was unfaithful to me I was so embarrassed I started crying in the bathroom of the rivers casino so I'm like what the fuck is this and he's like I told them not to post this one like I'll delete it so he removed it but I knew that he had like recorded it a week ago a week ago when I was in Atlanta when he was full on like having these conversations with me. Like, why would you think that that was okay ever? He didn't care. So now it's time to go. It's time to go to the airport. And I'm sad. I get in the car. I'm trying not to show that I'm driving probably underneath the speed limit. And I just started to cry. And... I pulled up to the departure spot and I got out of the car and I walked around and he was standing like right in front of the the passenger door. So I'm crying. I pull like a hundred dollar bill like out of my back pocket because I had just won and like I give it to him and I'm like you need to have money like here and I remember saying and so wholeheartedly feeling that I shouldn't I I said this to him I said I feel like I shouldn't send you back to Matt and Las Vegas like I'll never see you again and he says I'm going back to Las Vegas packing up all of my shit and coming back to get you and the dogs so we can finally put this to rest He hugs me, cracks my back, kisses me, wipes the tears from my face, and heads in to the airport. That was the last time I saw my husband. That was the last time I hugged my husband. That was the last time that I kissed my husband. I knew that I shouldn't have let him get on that plane. And ironically, just like the movie, The Family Man, that he brought up when he was trying to reconcile before EDC, he got on that plane, leaving my head and heart full of promises that he never intended on keeping. While he was back in Vegas, he started going to a mosque with his friend. He started reading the Quran. He started posting about Allah. We had FaceTime dates on Thursday nights, but he didn't really make any mention of when he was gonna pack his bags and come home. 
He made me help him create a be a man masculinity. I can help you change your life PDF workbook for him to sell on his Instagram. He made me update his link tree, his LinkedIn, and fix his resume because he had disabled Twitter and he was finally ready to turn a new leaf. He had always said when he turned 30 that he would be done with Findom, OnlyFans, and everything that went along with the adult content world. He would have me send and fill out applications for jobs, schedule interviews for those jobs, take the tests that they have for those jobs, and I did it, all so that he would come home. He even asked me to send him money to gamble with, which I did, like an idiot. He made $4,000 of $100 that I sent him, and I watched him in real time blow all of it, dollar by dollar. He would send me texts like, I think your growth as a woman and partner has been incredible to witness in the last few months. Learning how to control your emotions and relying on your capabilities to persevere through challenges. And all I could think to myself was, how did you witness any of this? All of the changes that I've made, I've made in your absence. I was forced to make them. And now you think that you're reaping the benefit and that you somehow created this for me? That's how I felt. The text started being less and less and he actually did try and pretend or try I don't know I think it was actually all pretend but he pretended to keep his promise until July 22nd on July 22nd I knew that he was at the gym that day um, we had spoken in the morning I got an alert that he had updated his marital status on Facebook which was uh, if you remember, the one social media that never changed or was blocked. And it said, Dick married Amanda on June 21st, 2022. So again, he was at the gym. So I screenshotted it and I sent it to him and I said, why did you redo that? He goes, I didn't. I said, well, that's strange. So I refreshed the page and I was no longer friends on Facebook with my husband. I texted him asking him what was going on, begging him to please, please not do this. And my text went through green. That is how Dick ended our marriage. To this day, I don't know who or what happened. But that is how my marriage ended. I did get one other message from him a couple of weeks later, and it read, I don't love you. I have never been in love with you. And that was all it said. I presume that he was doing this to show somebody that what he said about being single or in the process of a divorce, that that was true. Um, I'll never know. But do I care? Not anymore. Thank you for tuning in to episode 19 of the Dichotomy Diaries. Thank you for your reviews, your shares, your comments. Thanks for following me on TikTok and helping me along with that new endeavor. We have a lot of exciting things in the pipelines, you guys. Stuff that would make your head spin. So, I know that you guys are very, very excited for me to get into these interviews, and they are coming. We have one more so that I can wrap up my part. And that will be the next episode, which is episode 20. And then we'll be getting on to 
the tea like this wasn't enough tea for you guys no like but like for real the tea so i'm your host amanda arnier and thanks for joining me we got one more to go hang in there it's not over yet till you taste regret it's not over